what's going on gamers um so my last video about transcendental numbers i had mentioned uh wanting to do a proof of why pi is in fact transcendental so it's pretty short proof um really the main bulk of it comes from understanding a few important details a few important like what i guess what you would call lemmas which lead up to the actual proof. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of like an interactive on the spot proof here. So in order to prove the statement pi is transcendental, we need to know four different facts, four different uh, preliminary ideas, which all play into the actual proof, right? So first we have to we start off by mentioning that i, the square root of negative one, is an algebraic number. All right, so this plays into our second fact here that the algebraic numbers form what we the technical term for it is what we call a field. Um, the This is basically a really fancy way of saying that you can take any two algebraic numbers and you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide those two numbers and the result will also be algebraic, right? This is gonna be important. Specifically what we want to know is that if you take two numbers, two algebraic numbers, A and B, and multiply them together, then that uh, result will also be algebraic. Here, A is the, the set of algebraic numbers. Again, really, really sort of unnecessarily complicated language. All we need to know is you multiply two algebraic numbers, the result is also algebraic. All right, three. And this is the fact that really, really makes this proof so cool, is we need to know Euler's identity, right? So that is e to the pi i equals negative one. So this right here is like one of, if not the most important slash famous equations ever in all of math, right? Is hugely hugely important and um fundamental to, to a lot of different areas of math and a lot of different theorems and ideas and you know it's a really cool equation and the fact that it comes up here is what makes this whole thing really really cool in my opinion Right, this whole proof is tying in a lot of different ideas from a lot of different parts of math. And that's why I, I like I really wanted to go over this. Alright, so for our last um idea here, our last fact that we need to know before this proof is the Lindemann Weiser Strauss theorem. Now I briefly mentioned this before in the last video. I didn't I don't think I gave it a name. Um, but I definitely mentioned it, which is that if you take e to the a, where a is an algebraic number, then that is a transcendental number. So e to, e to the power of any algebraic number will give you a transcendental, transcendental number. So now that we know all of this, we can finally do our actual proof, which is very, very short. All right, so this proof is what we mathematicians call a proof by contradiction. So basically, we're gonna start out with this statement, right? We're gonna assume something, some property about pi. In this case, we're gonna assume pi is algebraic. Now, we don't know for certain if this is true or not. We have no idea. But the point of our proof here is that we're gonna try and show one way or another whether or not this is true but for the time being we're just going to say that it's true without actually knowing it and from this assumption we're going to build you know some statements and eventually reach some 
conclusion, right? So we're assuming pi is algebraic. So based on our first two statements, first two facts that we just mentioned, this implies that if we take pi times i, then that should be a, that should be an algebraic number, right? Because i is an uh, algebraic number, pi in this context we are assuming it is algebraic, so therefore multiplying two algebraic numbers is also algebraic. So, we're going to use the lindemann weiser strauss theorem, this bad boy. So if we take e to the pi i, then we would expect this to be transcendental. But, we know that the, um, the Euler identity exists, right? So we actually know for a fact that this equals negative 1 which is an algebraic number. So now we've arrived at our contradiction. This is the whole point of the proof here, right? These two things don't line up, right? We expect this number e to the pi i to be transcendental, but what we actually see is that it's algebraic. So we kind of need to go back through everything that we've done so far and figure out where we went wrong. So you know this is right, Euler's identity is definitely correct. If pi i is algebraic, then this statement should be correct. The lindemann weiser strauss theorem is not wrong. I'm not going to prove it. It's a very long proof, kind of outside the scope of this video anyway. This isn't, this is correct, right? So we have to go back up here. Algebraic numbers definitely form a field. We know that for a fact. So this is fine. So finally, we kind of come to the conclusion that it must be our assumption that is wrong. Therefore, pi must be transcendental. And we write the little box there because we're big boys just to make it official. So that's the entire proof, right? Very short, very easy to understand. Really, really kind of neat little little proof. Kind of ties everything all together. So, uh, yeah. Bye-bye.